In today's video, we're gonna show you how to solder an HVAC line set with map gas and stay bright eight. All right, so we've got our pipes fitted here. Uh, this one is already done, but I'm gonna show you on these other uh, ones what we need to do beforehand. So I'm gonna pull this out. So obviously all of these are shiny because we used our scotch bright pad and we went ahead and cleaned this real nice on both ends. And what we need to do next is we're gonna use this Stay Clean Flux. And you don't wanna to use too much of this because if you do, when this melts, it will melt inside of the joint and you don't want that. Uh, this can be bad for, to mix with your oil because it has some acidic properties. Um, so you just wanna do a light layer here and then you're just gonna slide this in all the way until it touches uh, the back end. And then as you light this, that flux will melt and then you'll be able to go ahead and put your uh, solder in. So we're gonna do this on all of these joints. Now, another thing with this method of soldering is that you don't want to have any gaps. So if you have any gaps here, like if you use a tool to, uh, to swage this, a lot of times you'll end up with a little gap and that's the disadvantage with Stay Bright 8 is that it'll find that gap and it'll it'll just seep through it. So that's the advantage with these fittings is that as you can see, there's no gaps and the solder will fill that joint really nice. All right, so all of our uh, fittings have the flux. So we're simply gonna light our torch up. And as you'll notice, what we'll do is we'll start to heat both of these simultaneously and then we'll start to heat over in this area where we want the solder to be pulled in. And then we'll just let the flame, we'll, we'll stop the flame and you'll still be able to use uh, the solder after you let the flame off. So that's another advantage with this. You don't have to actively be using the flame while you're soldering. So let's go ahead and let's do this joint back here. So as you can see, we're still able to work with our solder even after we've let the flame off. like that all right so we're gonna wipe all of these down and we're gonna do a manual inspection with our mirror and then um, obviously we're gonna do our pressure test once our unit is soldered to the piping all right so we just checked out all of our joints everything looks super good So one important thing with this is you wanna make sure that you wipe all of these joints down uh, because as we said before, this uh, flux is a little bit acidic and if you let it sit on the pipe on the outside, eventually it will um, corrode into the copper, but it's not like a crucial thing. 
um, but definitely a good practice just to wipe everything down. So everything looks really good here. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and fit our condenser. We'll get our last two joints uh, done and then we'll be ready to move on to our pressure test. All right, so before we do this, um, we're going to wrap the service valve with a wet rag. You can also use the different types of putties that they have, but there's actually a lot of people that don't even use a rag or anything um, because using this method with Staybrite 8, this only gets, the joint only gets to about 400 degrees. So even this is a little bit overkill. Um, but if you're a DIYer or someone that wants to have minimal stuff, you can just use a rag, get it soaking wet, not too wet, but wet enough to where it'll absorb some of the heat. So this spot, as you can see, we had a little gap there. So what I did was I took some channel locks and I just push this in just a little bit to close that gap and as long as this fills we're good to go. That's a beautiful little joint right there. So one advantage to using Staybrite 8 is this right here. So if you have a little bit too much and you drop it on a, a rubber pad or a plastic pad it'll actually burn a hole into the pad, whereas Staybrite 8 will just puddle up on top and you can just knock it off like that. All right, so this joint is good to go. As you can see, everything has nice coverage. So lastly, we'll do that one and then we'll be ready for our pressure test. All right, guys, so we got our hoses hooked up here. And we've just fed in about 300 and some PSI. We're going to go up to 400, just a little over 400. And then we're going to let this sit for a good 30 minutes to an hour. And then we'll see where we're at. Oh, well, guys, it has been over an hour. I'm just buttoning up some stuff. I still have to do the installation there. But as you can see, we're still over 400. Uh, first attempt, zero leaks. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this down and we're gonna be using our Navac pump with my Milwaukee adapter, super stoked to use that, and our True Blue kit, uh, hose kit. Um, this system will pump down to 150 microns in less than 10 minutes. If you'd like to see the whole video on how we use this Navac pump and the True Blue kit and pump a system down in less than 10 minutes, check out this video right here and we're gonna show you a step-by-step -step procedure on how to do that. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.